Hallelujah, Christ is risen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope and God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father of all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Friends of thoughts in our hearts, my name is creation of your Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. The second reading of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was within the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. 
If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were shut of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who's called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. But believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Well, welcome to the second Sunday of Easter. We still have beautiful flowers. We are singing the joyful hymns. And we have left behind those somber tones of Lent, and we're fully into Alleluia and Easter and joy. In this gospel reading, the, second, the one that is traditional for this second Sunday of Easter, we see Jesus appearing, the risen Christ appearing to his disciples. They're still in that upstairs room, maybe and we think probably it's the same room where they had the Last Supper together. And maybe where they hid after Jesus was arrested and, and most of them were unable to get themselves to stick with him. The women had to come there and tell them about the crucifixion. But now it's Sunday, it's Easter. And even though the doors are closed, he comes and he's with them. And he gives them three kind of gifts. First of all, peace. Peace be with you. He says that to them twice. And that must have been a very welcome message to disciples who had been so upset and probably ashamed of how cowardly they had been and how scared and also so worried about him but now he's there and he's not just a wisp he's not just a vision he's himself and he's wishing them peace and after he gives them peace he gives them holy spirit power he breathes on them and they are now empowered and thirdly, he gives them authority. It's now up to you all. It's up to you all to make judgments, to get organized, to go out into the world and tell them the good news of the inbreaking of God's kingdom and of God's power over death, because I am risen. So, so far, we've got a really upbeat Easter message and then comes Thomas. Uh-oh. Thomas was not there when they, when they first saw Jesus. And when they tell Thomas about it, he says, I just, I just can't believe. We don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he thought they were having a group hallucination or something. But he says, I really... I need to see for myself, and I need to see that it's the real Jesus, the full Jesus. That's what touching is about. But fortunately, 
A week later, they're gathered in the same place, and Jesus comes again, and Thomas is there, and Jesus says, come and touch me and believe. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas is the first one to name him as God. Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, blessed are those who have not had this opportunity that you've had, Thomas, to see and touch, but who come to believe. Now, I've heard many a sermon on this passage that really is kind of scolding Thomas and holding him up as a bad example. Thomas the doubter, none of us want to be the doubter. But the truth is that we know that at times we do doubt or at least question or at least struggle to fully understand the meaning of God's action, the meaning of the resurrection, the full truth and power of our faith. And honestly, at the worst times of our lives, we even go worse than doubt. We go onto the edge of despair. Grief and loss and stresses of every kind can lead us to that place where despair seems to become more real than faith. Years ago, I read a great memoir by the author Mary Carr. It's called The Liar's Club. Maybe some of you remember it. She grew up in a, in a tumultuous, totally dysfunctional household. Both of her parents dealt with addictions. There was, there was divorce. There was all sorts of chaos. But at the end of that memoir, which is beautifully written and actually has a lot of humor in it, at the end of the memoir, when she's looking back over her life and thinking about her siblings and, and how it was, she says, we never knew that despair could lie. She's thinking about her life now as an adult, which is full of meaning. And she realizes just how much she loves her family in spite of everything. And when they were caught up in those worst times, they thought that was all there was. So I loved that line, we never knew despair could lie. But despair can lie and does. When we hear that whispering in our ears that this is all there is, give up now, it's just a lie. And that is what the joy of the resurrection is all about. Knowing that renewal, reunion, and a deep well of life are there beyond doubt, beyond even grief, even great loss. So on this second Sunday of Easter, we don't have to get caught up in a little hand wringing. Do I really have enough faith? I'm not sure. What about Thomas? And we don't need to get caught up in finger pointing about other people who may not believe quite the right way. Because this season is really not about any of that. It's about what God has done and about letting ourselves just trust in that. Letting ourselves rest in the great power and victory that comes not from us and our experiences, but that comes from God. In this season of uh, all the basketball games, I've been thinking about saying, go Easter, <laughs> beat Lent. <laughs> not that Lent's not a good thing, but I think if the scores are going up and down, the score of Easter has got to be way up there in comparison with the score of Lent.
It's time to let go of somberness and severity and just let ourselves cross over into joy. Remember how Jesus said, how can the guests fast when the bridegroom is with them? So if we reread this story of Jesus' interaction with Thomas, we can see it in such a positive way. First of all, Jesus does come back the second time. Maybe he came back just because he wanted to help out Thomas. Thomas, I don't want you to have to live with doubt. I don't want you to have to live a life that doesn't have the underpinning of faith. So here I am, touch me. And then he says at the end, blessed are those who cannot see and touch me in this way and yet believe. And I think that is a prayer for all of us, for all the Christians through the ages. Jesus invites us to believe and he has compassion on us when we struggle. He wants to say, receive this knowledge that God is greater than death because this knowledge will change your life. And changing our lives is what it's all about. If we look at the other readings today, we see messages in each one of them about unity and community, about sharing, about gladness, about creating a circle of witness and faith and care for one another and about welcoming all who come, every human being who comes. Today we're lucky we're gonna welcome another little human being who's coming, little Rosie who's gonna be baptized in just a little while. There she is, checking us out. And we welcome her and pray that we and she will be strengthened our whole lives long by the action of God, by the loving invitation of Christ, and by the great gift of faith. Amen. Amen. <laughs> parents and godparents would please stand. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. We present Rosalie Cordelia to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. The congregation would please stand. Will all you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in her life in Christ? We will. Let us join with these parents and godparents who are committing this child to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate,
Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will, with God's help. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your Son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Put your head over here. Name this child. 
Rosalie Cordelia. Rosalie Cordelia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oil. And now just one more time, one more thing here. And then you get your special re-birthday candle. Rosalie Cordelia. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and you are marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Bless the faith of Christ crucified, his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Roses for Rosalie. I'd like to introduce to you the newest Christian in the world, a child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. What do we say to our newest Christian? The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, St. Paul's. Morning. Welcome all who are here today in person or online, especially if you are visiting today. We are glad that you are here, and if, we'd love for, you to, uh, for us to get to know you better, and we hope you'll do that by filling out a visitor's card, handing it to an usher, and joining us for refreshments following this service. Our gift shop is open, and there's lots of really wonderful things in there to uh, think about purchasing for the ministries of the church. Uh, there are, it's Easter Eastertide. Uh, it's actually a really, really full service for Low Sunday. I mean, who has Low Sunday? Not St. Paul's, clearly. Uh, well done for being here today. Um, just a couple things. Uh, the first is that confirmation, uh, that service is on May 5th at 4 p.m., followed by the parish picnic and plant swap here at St. Paul's. If you're interested in reaffirming your faith, renewing your vows before the bishop, or being confirmed and received, please talk to me and we can get you on the list to do that. Finally, uh, you, you'll notice, you've noticed, everybody who has received the e-news or have looked at the bulletin today, you notice that we are in fact uh, launching a capital campaign this spring. And we will have a special meeting of the parish on April 21st at 9.30 a.m. in the sanctuary. Coffee and light refreshments will be served and there will be literature and visuals and uh, we look forward to sharing with you where we are with our fundraising efforts as well as uh, the design of what is to come. We're super excited about that uh, and we hope that you will join us uh, that morning to hear more. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we lose not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory.
Just one announcement before we pray together. Uh, following this service, at around 11.45, we will have our uh, monthly church tour. So if you're interested in uh, touring the church, please uh, meet one of our docents in the back at the bell. Let us stand and pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the universe of your Son, the Savior Jesus Christ, and you have given us the spiritual food that nourishes our bodies and blood. Send us down to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let's go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks to God. Hallelujah.